What's up, and welcome back to the 48 Men podcast. I am Christian, and uh, I know that the title of this podcast pretty much says it all, and uh, 99% of our guests will mainly be men. Um, but today, I wanted to have my wife on in hopes that this episode would be maybe something for the couples and uh, just something to encourage those in relationships. So I'm excited to have her on today. So give a warm 48 men welcome to my wife, Sadie. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming your wifey onto the show. Um, No, I'm so excited, and I do think it's so great for couples to be fit together, be healthy together, and so I think this is going to be awesome. Yep, I do, and like I said, I do not foresee any uh, females being on the podcast uh, except you so well we that might change this. but I don't I don't see that happening well we talked about this because we did have some girls comment on his stuff and be like why isn't there four eight women it should be both all this stuff and I've always had a girls ministry Elo sister and I would always kind of joke with Christian you should start Elo bro and he obviously didn't do that he started four eight men which is so much more unique to him and so much more um just about what you really love to do anyways. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's cool that I can speak to the girls, you can speak to the guys. And today we come together. The two become one. That is true. Well, and I've just kind of figured that if she's in her lane, I might do something with the men, kind of stick in my lane. And if you are women watching, you're welcome. And you can help keep your guy accountable. So uh, maybe just view it like that. And hey, the healthier you guys are, the healthier... Everyone is, you know, the men, um, a lot of times are leaders of the family, good fathers, mean good, happy wives, good fathers mean happy, good children. And so it is so important that our men are healthy, spiritually first speaking, and healthy physically. I think it's really important. And I've seen a blessing in our life because of the, um, I guess, consistent eat consistency that you put into working out and yeah. also obviously most importantly working on your relationship with the Lord. Yeah and uh, I'm sure most of you know Satan if you don't uh, she is awesome but I feel like most people know you for your faith so I'm kind of excited to talk to you today more about your fitness and maybe some things that people don't know about. Yeah I'm not really uh, I, I'm not really pegged as the fitness woman I've never really been interviewed for my fitness so I'm very excited for this. We're opening up a new avenue for you to... Wow, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited. But if you don't know, Sadie was actually a javelin and a high school young prodigy back in her glory days. Um, She said... I'll I'll let you kind of explain some of your feats in javelin and basketball. Well, yeah, it was actually pretty crazy. Um... I guess because my grandpa, Phil, had like a insane arm. Like he was, he played um, quarterback at Tech right ahead of Terry Bradshaw. And that's kind of something that like most people know about him. And so it was kind of like who out of the guys were going to get the arm, you know. And my guy cousins that were a little older than me didn't really have the arm. And then my brother didn't really have the arm. And um Everyone kind of kind of started to notice whenever we'd play football, like out in the backyard, I would throw it really far, and it was like pretty impressive for a girl. And so one day, um, it was like the first day of track practice for um, middle school. And the way that it worked in middle school, it was like everybody has to try every single event, and whoever's the best at it, then that was your event for the year. Mm-hmm. And so we got to javelin. And so everybody had to go up and throw it. And so all the girls were going up, and they were throwing it. And, I mean, this is not to be offensive, but it literally was just not going very far because that is kind of a random thing for a girl to be good at, I feel like, or you have to really work towards it. And uh, first day of practice, I picked up the thing and just chunked it. And literally, I think day one, like, broke the middle school record. And everyone was like, what the heck? And so then they um, brought out a football, and I started throwing the football, and they had the boys' quarterback come out, throw the football with me, and I was throwing it just as good as him. And so everyone was like, you should play football. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, should I play football? So I went home and asked my parents, like, can I play football? And they were like, no, because you can't get hurt for basketball because I played basketball really competitively. And so sports were, like, a huge part of my life. So I ended up in eighth grade um, playing on our high school team like um and went to state for the high schooler so I was in eighth grade competing against the seniors and came in fifth I think in the state 
uh, for high schoolers in eighth grade. So that was pretty crazy. So I definitely was pretty competitive in that and really thought that's what I was going to do. I thought that that was going to be my scholarship to college. And then I wanted to hopefully either also get to do basketball or walk on the, a basketball team because I loved basketball probably the most, but was maybe a little bit better, had a better shot at going for track. Yeah. And you also were in the Junior Olympics for basketball. Yes. So I love basketball. Um, And I'll I'll say this about basketball. Like, that was a family sport for us, too. Like, my great-grandpa played in the Marines, like, for the Marines. Like, he was on the basketball team. Um, That's what he did during the war, and it was, like, their entertainment. And so that's always been, like, a huge part of our family because we look up to him and love him so much. Um, And I remember – just being really competitive at a young age like whenever you know we were playing rec league ball a lot of girls didn't really care and I really cared Mm -hmm. and I wanted to work hard and I wanted to do good and then I made it this goal and I really wanted to be on the high school team whenever I was young um, because I wanted my great-grandparents to get to see me play and so um, I worked really hard one summer and um, would not go in the house until I made at least 100 shots and then I would do free throws and make sure I made them and wouldn't go in inside until I did. And that year, because I trained really hard, I was really good. So in seventh grade, I started scoring well over 20 points a game, like was doing really well for the high school teams. So I was playing seventh grade, eighth grade, junior varsity and varsity. So I was just nonstop basketball. That was like everything I did in seventh and eighth grade. Um, and I loved it so, so much. But I think during that time, oh, and then for the Junior Olympics, it was cool because that was that time I was playing so much. So I feel like because I was playing and practicing and preparing, I was doing really well Mm -hmm. and got this letter to be on the USA team. And my great-grandpa died that year, but it was really cool because right before I went to Austria to play, my great-grandmother gave me his American flag pin that he got when he played basketball for the USA. So that was a really, really special thing for me. And when I was in Austria, that's kind of whenever my faith became my own, which is a really cool part of my testimony. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think like playing sports really competitively, I was a major like preparer, major practicer. Like I would be very, very hard on myself and make sure that I felt very prepared for the game. And I think it really benefited me in sports, but I think I've had, and I think there is something to that, that commitment, that is a really good thing. But I think in life, I've had to learn that sometimes I'm not always going to be well practiced. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't have to be because I'm not, I'm not performing. I mm-hmm. can just live. But, um, you know, also keeping that same mentality of committing to something and working hard does reap benefits, but not having to practice just to perform well for things. I think that's been something I've had to learn the difference. It's great to commit. It's great to work hard. Those things do, you know, end up being rewarded later, but also, like, you don't need to perform Mm -hmm. in everything you do because I think sometimes I put on this performance mentality because in sports, when the game came, I wanted – I wanted that, you know, which is fun and it's exciting in sports, but in life, um, it's a hard thing to try to always perform and be well practiced. Yeah. So I know that you also did track as well, um, but did you always like enjoy that idea of like working out and training? Um, Because there were a few times, and I don't, you're you're not proud of those moments, and there's there's very few of them. Where you may have cut a few corners and those those memories still scar you? Yes. Okay, so I I will say with track, I loved during javelin. I did not like everything else. Like the running and the training and especially training for a javelin because they want you to be super big and strong and I was never like that. I was always really little and skinny and not um, built for what you would think I should be for a javelin. So my coaches wanted me to train really hard. And honestly, um, I did cut a lot of corners. It's really weird because I did practice a lot and I did make sure I was prepared. But when it came to the actual workout, Mm -hmm. I dreaded it. I think I just hated it. I felt like it was, I think I saw working out as like punishment because I would get punished for things and my punishment would be to go do 100 push-ups or to go 
like run a couple laps around the track or to go do burpees. And so mm -hmm. I just began to like dread working out as a whole. And so, yes, I did lie one time about my workouts because I was also playing tennis in high school, which I still love to do. And um, tennis and track season were at the same time. And so whenever I would have a couple of tennis matches a day, I would like not want to go do the track workout. So a couple of times I didn't. And my coach, like I was running my warm-up lap and the coach came and he started running up behind me. And he was like, Sage, did you do your workout the other day? Did you have your tennis match? And I panicked. And I do not lie. You know this about me. I don't, never lie. lie. Like, that is, like, my pet peeve. I cannot, I can't even do it if I try, probably. But this day I did, and I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay, why don't you go in the middle of the field in front of everyone and go do 30 burpees? And he knew I did it. And I was so embarrassed. And then I lied again because I only did 17 because <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> 17 probably took you like an hour. It, did. it was horrible. It was horrible. So yes, working out became my punishment to me. And so I did not like working out mm -hmm. at all. And then I think I've gotten through a lot of like unhealthy seasons of working out, but I'm finally at the place and you've helped me with this where I love it and it truly is healthy and it's I'm doing what it's intended to do, you know? Yeah. I'm doing it in a way that it was intended for. Yeah. Yeah. I want to tell you all about Athletic Greens. I started taking this stuff because I wanted more energy and I wanted something that actually tasted good. With one scoop, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. I've tried a lot of products like this one before, and I honestly just really don't like the taste of it. But AG1 is delicious, it's easily dissolved, and it's super smooth, and it sits well on, on an empty stomach in the morning. I have gotten Sadie to try it, and I've gotten my brother to try it, and they both really love it. I personally take AG1 in the mornings on an empty stomach before I go to the gym, before I ever start my training, before I drink any pre-workout or any coffee. My first sip is always with AG1. In 2020 alone, Athletic Greens donated over 1.2 million meals to kids. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash huff Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash huff to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And this, this might be more of a question maybe targeted towards women, but I also think that if, well, obviously if guys are listening, but I think, I think if, if a guy is listening, they can maybe help, help um, with their girlfriend, um, fiance, or wife in this capacity but you always said that when you got engaged that that would be your season of working out yes I um did. did you enjoy like because we were engaged for five months six months yeah. did you enjoy that little s snapshot tidbit or was did you kind of feel like you put pressure on yourself or did you did i you really, really enjoy it? loved it i really did i have to say that might go back to my uh being well practiced being well like being ready for the game, being ready. And, I, and to me, I wanted to be like ready for marriage, ready for this moment. And um, it was important to me that I looked and felt my best, um, going in as a bride, going in as your bride. And so I always said, I was like, there's a season for everything. And my season for working out is going to be whenever I'm engaged. And I didn't really push myself too hard before then, um, just because, like I said, I'd had unhealthy seasons before and never really wanted to get back into that. But I knew when I got engaged, I wanted to go in super healthy and super strong. And so, yeah, I worked my butt off. And I can attest, you you worked super hard. I did. I, I started doing title boxing, and that was really good for me. I loved it, loved it, loved it. I started working out at 6.30 with a trainer couple days a week and um, loved it. I mean, I had so much fun. And on our wedding day, I truly did feel the best. And um, I have to say, back to what I was saying earlier about the performance thing, because I want to make sure that you under they understand what I'm saying. Like, I think like my biggest thing sometimes was like, I got to practice because I do not want to feel the embarrassment of shooting an air ball. Like, mm -hmm. like it, sometimes that was my mentality. I don't want to be embarrassed. Like, 
instead of like I need to practice so that I can do my best and have fun with the game and like do the best for my team it was like so I don't just screw up uh -huh. and I think in life sometimes it's the same way it's like I want to be so prepared I want to perform well because I don't want to embarrass myself but there are sometimes in life where like an air ball actually just makes you a better player mm -hmm. like an embarrassment a hardship a moment of uh, trial actually just makes you a stronger person in general and so I think I've learned that yes hard work commitment it pays off. It's great. When I worked out in our wedding season, it was great. But there are still going to be moments that you're not going to be perfect. Like you're going to airball. You're going to miss the mark sometimes. You're mm -hmm. going to, you know, gain weight here. You might lose weight there. But like you can't let that be your joy. Mm -hmm. Like it has to be a joy for truly playing the game or truly living your life. And so I think for our wedding, I wasn't training because I was like, oh, I don't want to see any flaws in me. Because there's always going to be flaws if I look hard enough, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever my perspective is, but I wanted to train because I wanted to get the most enjoyment out of just stepping in as a bride to be confident, not because I look awesome, because I feel awesome, you know, because I truly know I'm the healthiest version of me. And so I think my perspective had already shifted before then, and that's why I really did, uh, I loved it. Well, we're clearly no longer engaged. We're married and have a child, and with a child, you have to go through pregnancy. Um, so what was that season like and kind of walking through that? Clearly that's a drastic difference between engagement and being pregnant. So Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty big difference. I will say, like, I, at the beginning, I don't know if you remember this, because shortly before we got pregnant, I had just made a goal to do a pull-up. One pull-up. Well, I remember. I'm back at this goal again. She's but back I at really it. wanted to do this pull-up. Then I found out I'm pregnant, and I'm like, okay, well, Maybe I could still do it. And so I kept training. I was strength training at the time. And then I started getting horribly sick. By week seven and a half, I think, I was, like, really sick. And I guess we could find out I was pregnant at six weeks. So it was only a week and a half of finding out till really sick. Yeah. And um, I kept trying to work out. I think I went one more time with my trainer. And I was like, this is just horrible. I was throwing up every single day at least once a day, you remember it. And I did that all the way until week 24 of pregnancy, so seven to 24. And um, that was so hard. And I think like, and I got COVID at 12 weeks pregnant mm -hmm. and that, I was so sick for a couple weeks, yeah, maybe bad. three weeks um, with COVID and still throwing up. And so I would just have never been that sick in my life um, and felt more weak in my life. And of course, like, it was kind of hard because I had to like surrender the idea of doing this goal that I had set and also just like surrender to the process of um, this pregnancy and not worry about my fitness, not worry about what I looked like, not worry about because that wasn't the time to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I said earlier. There really is a season for everything. And for women, especially, I think men like y'all can kind of for the most part, unless mm -hmm. you have an injury or you know, a, a random yeah, situation, we, we you, can, you can work out, you know, but for women, like, you know, you might get pregnant, you have your period, you have kids, you have just reasons why today might not be the best day. And I think there's like power and strength and actually being able to recognize when that is and being able to say, you know what, my body, what's healthiest for my body is truly to rest. And ultimately, like working out, should be to become healthy mm -hmm. and so if we really care about being healthy then we need to know whenever it's time to lay down and just rest yeah. and drink water and uh, you know eat <laughs> actually eat you know nourish your body like that's really important women do these things um, especially whenever you have a child and you it's like okay I myself needs to go out the window because now I'm taking care of this child so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what I look like um, it really matters that I'm healthy for her that would have been cool if you like progressively were able to do pull-ups until you were like nine months pregnant then you were doing like heavy like weighted pull-ups with honey yeah that was I'm saying like crazy. if like if you if you got to where you could do a pull-up and then every week you just kept doing it then by like nine months you were just doing a pull-up that would be crazy but I actually found however out, many pounds heavier you I were. actually found out that pull-ups are not good to do when you're pregnant what so I'm actually glad that I didn't that is that. good that is good well this is a loaded question um and I think you'll be able to speak into it. Um, but how can men especially encourage women to train physically and to work out beyond just physical appearances? Yeah, I think um, mainly it's just what you said, like 
encourage them, like encourage. Don't discourage them because, or make, put any pressure on them because of like a physical um, appearance thing. Like I think women are sensitive, like, and that, that's not a bad thing. I think people are like, people are get really, it, you get touchy about that word too, like sensitive. But sometimes like there's actually like a sweetness to that. Like there's like a guardedness to our hearts for that. It's like, I'm sensitive to the words that you say because your words carry weight in my life. And so if you say something negative about my body or make me feel pressure to go work out, then it really hurts. Like it runs deep because it makes me feel like I'm not good enough, you know? Uh-huh. And you've never made me feel like that. I'm so thankful. I've been in other relationships where I have felt like that. And then I work out because I want to be this image that this guy is proud mm-hmm. of. And ultimately I'm never going to feel like enough, you know? And so I think like when it comes to working out, like if men want to encourage women to do that, like let it be a fun thing. Let it be like, Hey, I'm going to do this. I want to invite you in on this because I feel so good when I do it. And I know you will too, but don't make them do it at your level. Like this guy goes to the gym five days a week and busts his butt and loves it. I am not that person. I'm a two to three type of girl. I'm going to do my own workouts. I don't really enjoy doing workouts like he does, but I love doing my own workouts. He's going to drink all the protein stuff. That's not really my thing, but hey, I love a good chocolate milk protein every now and then. Mm -hmm. But like we have different ways of working out, but you're so encouraging to me. and You've never made me feel less than. And I think that's the biggest thing. It's like, don't make them feel less than. Don't make them feel stupid because you've never made me feel stupid, even though I have to ask random (laughs) questions. Don't make me feel, don't ever like make them feel like, wow, you've been working out that long. You still can't do a pull up because like you could do that because you can do like 100 and I can't even do one. And I work and actually train to do that. But like you've always encouraged me when I get up in the morning, I get up like 630 to go work out. You're always like, hey, good job. Way to get up. Like, and it makes me feel good that you acknowledge that. And so I think that encouragement means a lot. And I think seeing where your spouse is at is really important too, because even like postpartum, I think is a big thing for women. They feel like they have to bounce back. We're living in like a very bounce back culture Mm -hmm. where people like expect that once you have a baby, you should look amazing the next day because that's what the people on Instagram post about. And that is just not realistic and nor is it even healthy. And also, it's not even attainable for half the women because you don't even know what they go through in their birth, their actual labor experience. And for me, like, I realized that I was, like, the kinder I was to myself and the more I rested, I randomly just got back into shape, like, over time because I let my body have, like, the natural process of healing. And then I started, like, playing with honey and, you know, picking her up and putting her down. And there was my squats and, like, like my Mm -hmm. lifts and all this stuff. And then, like, the weight started falling off. And then when it got to the point where I was about, what, three and a half months after, Mm -hmm. I actually started working out. And now I feel like I'm in one of the best shapes I've been in my life. And I'm proud of that, but it's not everything to me. More than that is the fact that I'm a mom now, and that's the best thing ever. Um, But it took time is what I'm saying. It took time. Mm -hmm. And I think um, guys have to also understand that for a girl, it is just going to take a little bit more time sometimes uh, to get stronger. It might might not be the time to push themselves because Mm -hmm. they're in pain from childbirth or whatever it is. And I think the more time you get, the the better. Well, we're believing for a pull-up. Yeah, we are. We're believing for a pull-up. I've been training, baby. You have it. You're going to get it. I know. Um, but we both live pretty sporadic lives, obviously. If you follow us, we travel a good bit. Um, you know, we don't necessarily really have a routine. And a lot of times people ask us that, like, what does a day in the life look like? Because really every day is uh, so different. It's so different. Um, and even, like, spiritually speaking, like, we – you know, we don't necessarily have a set routine that we do. So how do you stay disciplined with your spiritual routine, I guess, if you want to call it routine? And, and what would you say to the person who kind of feels like they can relate to us in that sense mm-hmm. of like their work or their job or their family or whatever? They doesn't really allow them to have a set routine. So how, yeah. how do you kind of feel just that yeah. discipline aspect to keep yeah. your spiritual side? I would say it's almost even like I talked about, like, it's not a performance thing. You know, you don't have to do it, like, read your words so that you don't fail. You know, you read your words so that you can know the word, so that you can walk with the Lord and hear his voice. You don't have to pray so that you don't 
die. You know, like, I think sometimes we think that way. If I don't pray, then I will get struck by lightning. That's not true. Like you pray because you mm. want to be in relationship and communication with God. Um, it's not to check off a box. It's not to perform. It's not to practice well. It's actually just because you love the Lord and mm-hmm. you enjoy um, walking through life with him. And so I think for me, the biggest thing is just staying in relationship with God. And um, how do you stay in a relationship? You communicate, you talk. That's going to look different every day for me sometimes. Some days I don't like reading a lot. Sometimes I don't like praying a lot. Sometimes it'll look like just getting in the car and worshiping. Sometimes it'll look like getting in the car and just being with the Lord in my thoughts, you know? Like sometimes it'll just be talking to Christian about stuff that I'm going through, confessing. That's something that I've learned this year in marriage is like the power of confessing to your spouse. Like there are times where like I'll struggle with something and my temptation is just not to tell anyone and just be like, oh well, I'll just get over it. But there's something so powerful when I look at Christian and say, hey, can I tell you something? I am like so jealous of this girl and I don't want to be and I that's not my heart my heart is to cheer her on and Christian can say like oh thanks for telling me that and pray with me like there's just something powerful about that because the word says like to confess your sins to one another Mm -hmm. and so um I think yes every day is going to be different but every day you should be in relationship with him however that looks like right now we've been in town so I get to wake up and read my new morning mercies and book and I get to you know read the word and underline stuff and I have time for that right now but guess what next week we're going to be gone for two weeks and I'm not going to have time for that yep. but I'm going to definitely be in prayer and be in worship and so I think just staying in a relationship is the most important thing yeah that's good I love that well the new year is upon us um and how would you encourage those listening in their faith for this year because I feel like you know 2020 and 2021 has been such an interesting mm-hmm year an interesting dynamic just in our country so to speak mm-hmm. um so what would you say to how would you encourage somebody f- and for their faith for this year yeah so is this my challenge to no them? no this is not the challenge it's not yet challenge, this is just your faith this is just like yeah because i yeah. feel like we need to work on a lot of things yeah i would say if i could encourage you in anything for this year um especially in your faith is just get familiar with the word really truly like get familiar with the word I think that so many of us think we know the word because we heard stories in Sunday school growing up or because we listen to podcasts or because we go to church on Sunday but um, you don't really realize that you might just hear one scripture or maybe not even that you know you might be talking about God but you don't know what God's actually said or what God's actually spoken and I can tell you from someone who is in the word a lot there is still so many times daily when I read the word I'm like babe listen to what this says or I'm like oh my gosh this is so good and it's always a new it's always fresh it's always living so it's always going to inspire you and I think that that is something that you will see a difference in your life if you get to know the word it's just true um last year this past year this year my word for the year was pure and um my verse was when it talks about how um it says, how does a man stay pure? By guarding himself to the word. And I think that's very true. Like the only way to truly stay pure in this world is to guard yourself to the word of God. And so as, you know, the times go on and things get more confusing and the news gets louder and the fears get heavier and all of these things happen, it's so important to guard yourself to the word of God. And so that would be my my challenge to you and just get out the things in your life that are voices of negativity, that are voices of doubt, that are voices of fear and bring in the voices that are encouragement, that are hope-filled, that are love, that are positive and that are truthful. That's going to be super important. Yeah, that's so good. I want to get one, I want to get, before I ask the challenges, I want to get a piece of advice from you. And so if you're a single guy and if you're still listening, then that's awesome. Um, And you're going to potentially reap a benefit from this question. Okay. Um, But what would you say, I was looking back this to make sure, what would you say to a guy um, who is wanting to pursue a relationship with a girl? Hmm. Okay. This is a little, little, all encompassing. This is so awesome because as soon as you said it, I immediately knew my answer and I didn't know you were going to ask me that question. Because of how you pursued me, there is one theme to that that is very clear, and that is consistency. Mm -hmm. You were so consistent. And what's cool about that is I think you would say the same thing for fitness, then you say the same thing for faith, it's the same thing for pursuing a girl. Consistency is 
key. You never made me question if you were going to text me the next day. You never, like, ghosted me for a day even. Mm -hmm. You always were very clear with your intentions. You're always very consistent with when you came and visited me, when you called me, when you texted me. Um, You were just so consistent in your love for me and um, consistent even in your behavior towards me. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, of course there are days that you're going to get frustrated or annoyed with me or whatever and vice versa like we're in relationship here but you're so consistent and I think for guys like I think the world might tell you like oh it's cool to like play it cool it's actually not cool you know it's actually cool to be consistent it's cool to be clear it's cool to be confident but not cocky it's cool to be humble you were so humble and I think all of those things are super important in pursuing a woman. And um, I'll also will say it's cool to have community around you because yeah, you had such good community around you that you invited into our relationship. We hung out with friends so much. But even beyond that, you I remember you and your best friend, and we talked about this the other day, um, you used to tell me, like, oh, me and Parker were just praying for you and Freddie just mm-hmm. when we were dating. And now we're married to these awesome men, but, like, y'all would pray for us. You would ask Parker advice. You would ask other friends advice. And, like, you truly, like, led our relationship very, very well. Mm-hmm. And I would say from some w- girl who's really strong personality and I have a tendency to step into any situation and lead, you led our relationship. And um, I think that was very important, and that was something that I thought was really attractive. Yeah, I love that. So if you're still, if you're, I don't say still listening, but if you're a guy, then you just got some good advice from my awesome wife. (laughs) But as you know, um, the theme of each podcast, well, not necessarily the theme, but something that, you know, we try to replicate um, are two different challenges. So physical challenge and a spiritual challenge. And with her, with her physical challenge, it uh, might be leaned maybe towards a couple's work out or a couple's kind of thing, but it, it doesn't, two. it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. Two. Okay. Okay. F- f- physical challenges. Physical, phys- physical. Okay. I mean, two physical challenges okay. and one will be for a couple okay. and one will be. And this is, this is to do for the next week. Yes. Okay. For the next week, work out three times this week, first thing in the morning. So wake up. If you up. already work out more than three times a week, then that's okay. Yeah, but that's okay too. But if, if you, you don't, don't this will be your week, three days this week, wake up early, work out as soon as you wake up. So for me, I work out at seven and I will say I am not a morning person. So if you're like, eh, this is not going to be my challenge because I'm not a morning person. I'm not either, but I have started to do that and I love it. Every time I wake up and work out, do I not? I'm in the best mood. I mean, I'm in yeah, the best are. mood because I go there and I listen to like uh, Jesus rap songs and I love it. That's my that's my jam, Christian rap. And then while we're there, while I work out, I listen to Christian songs, whether it's worship or Christian rap, and it just like gets me in the best mood. I have good conversations with my trainer, and then from that point on, I get done at 7:45, 8, and I have the whole rest of the day. I get to come back, wake up, honey, get her ready for the day, go to work. Like it just sets my day off great. So that's my first challenge. My second challenge is for couples. If you are a married couple or you're engaged dating, here's my challenge this week. Do a dance together, whether it is a reel or a TikTok, go dance together because that is a physical challenge that y'all can laugh at each other with. You have to work towards learning something together. And if you do it, tag us because we would love to see it. And you, it has to be the challenge to where you can't just do one and you're done because you have to have some sort of like, you know, like if, if we only did one dance then I would be like, oh, that, that wasn't much of a workout. But after we do... Oh, no. 15 like, or 20, Yeah, because I'm, I'm kind of sweating. Because you got to do it right. Yeah, like, so you actually have to do a good job. It can't just be like a little... Oh, I tried. I tried, yeah. and then it's one or two, then you're done. So, uh, yeah. So Pick one that challenges pick you. Pick one that challenges you. So, yeah. Okay, spiritual challenge. Okay, my spiritual challenge is going to be... Um, I guess whenever you get done with your dance video, because this doesn't really work for this week, or how about you do the physical this week, you do the spiritual next week. Um to start the new year. I am going to give you a challenge for this week to delete social media. And when you think to go to social media, when you think about going to Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever it is, like go to the word um, on your phone or the word in your Bible app or have a conversation with someone. Um, I think that, that those moments that I've deleted social media for a week or so have been some of the most 
important moments for me. I mean, that's when I read my last one. I read Redeeming Love, like a 500-page book in seven days just because I didn't have a distraction of social media. Like one time I deleted social media, and it ended up being three months, so I got it back because I loved it so much. You know, and every time I've done it, I've just felt so close to the Lord um, because sometimes you do need a little reset, and if you haven't been getting in the Word and you've been getting on social media first and more, then that'll just be a little reset to be like, okay, I need to like reprioritize right now and put the word first and then look at social media. And granted, like I look at social media probably more than I physically read the word um, even now. But I think that I know and it's very clear that the Lord is the number one priority of my life. But I think this is a great way to actually show that and get in the routine of going to the word with all that extra time that you don't think you have that you're spending on social media. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, there you have it. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, do a rating, but don't do it if you're not going to give us five stars, but do a rating and let us know how you're enjoying the podcast. I'm glad that this was my first, uh, physical, um, podcast with somebody in the room with me. So no better person than you. So I love you. Love you. Thanks for being on my podcast and, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. (laughs)